One of my favorite Cambodian dishes to order is beef luklak. Lots of beef and gravy poured over steaming hot rice and served with a vinaigrette over lettuce and tomatoes. So good. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera and we're all about simple food, simple faith. One of the things about this pandemic was just having to stay home and cook all the time and missing our favorite restaurants. But that really pushed us to create more of those flavors at home. And this is one of them. I'm starting off with about a pound of flank steak. And I love using flank steak because there's all these grains that you see and you cut across it and that's what makes it so tender. Just gonna cut them into a smaller sections so that I can slice it easier. And you wanna slice them quite thin, so about an eighth of an inch if you can. And if you put these pieces in the freezer for about 20 minutes or so, it does harden the meat just a little bit so that it's easier to slice more thinly. All right, once you have sliced up your meat, we're going to add about two teaspoons of cornstarch. This helps to velvet the meat, which also makes it more tender. We're using two teaspoons of brown sugar. Two teaspoons of fish sauce. two teaspoons of dark soy sauce. And if you're not using dark soy sauce, you can use regular soy sauce, but I would add just a little bit more sugar. And two teaspoons of oyster sauce. And two cloves of garlic minced. I'm just gonna put it through my garlic press. Oh, that garlic is so pungent. And that fish sauce. Yes, that too. You know, a lot of people say they don't like fish sauce because it's so, well, pungent, but really it doesn't taste fishy when you just use it for marinating or um, in your recipes. It just, it just adds an additional layer of flavor. Once you've mixed up all your beef with the marinade, we're gonna set this aside to marinate for about 30 minutes while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. We're gonna make the sauce that goes into the beef. I'm starting with a quarter cup of beef broth. And if you don't have beef broth, you can just use a quarter cup of water, should be fine. Adding a tablespoon of dark soy. And a tablespoon of oyster sauce. And one teaspoon of brown sugar. I'm just gonna stir that up. I just find like when we're doing stir fries, the process goes so quickly, it's really important to have all of your um, ingredients ready to go. We are making a vinaigrette to go with the dish. I'm starting off with half a cup of warm water, adding a quarter cup of regular sugar. We're just going to dissolve this and that's why you need the warm water so that the sugar dissolves. Okay, and we're adding a third of a cup of lime juice, or a quarter of a cup, depending on how much, how limey you like it. So I've been told that if you roll your limes, or if you bring them up to room temperature, or you stick them in the microwave for a little bit, that it makes the limes more juicy. That really doesn't make sense to me because I'm assuming that same amount of juice is in each lime. Maybe it just gives you more access. Okay, 
Okay, well that didn't get me very far. Probably need one more lime. All right, that gave me about a quarter cup of juice. I'm adding three tablespoons of fish sauce. Okay, one clove of garlic, minced or pressed or whatever you wanna call it. And a pinch of crushed red pepper. You can add more or omit if you don't want it. Just to add a little bit of a kick. And that's it. That's your sauce or vinaigrette that you will be serving with the dish. To serve the look lack, we have rice cooking and I'm also gonna slice up some tomato, cucumbers and lettuce. I'm just slicing the items as I remember them from the restaurant. So you can slice them however you like. And I'm using iceberg lettuce and I'm just going to shred it. Now that you have all your ingredients together, we're ready to cook and dinner will be ready just like that. Heating up my wok on medium high heat. And if you don't have a wok, you can use a large frying pan. We're gonna cook the meat half at a time. So wait for this to heat up a little bit. Adding two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Okay, just moving the oil around a bit. Adding half the beef. I'm gonna let that sear for about a minute before giving it a stir. It only takes about two to three minutes to get this beef cooked. Okay, when it's about 80, 90% cooked, transfer it to a dish. Adding one more tablespoon of vegetable oil and cook the remaining beef. While the beef is cooking for that one minute, I did make a cornstarch slurry. Two teaspoons of cornstarch in cold water. Give it a stir to make sure it dissolves. Cornstarch won't dissolve in warm water, so don't do that. Wow, that aroma is fantastic. So good, I can hardly wait. Okay, so this batch just push to the side when it's about 80, 90% cooked, toss in your sauce. Okay, let that cook for a little bit. Okay, pour in your cornstarch slurry. And wait for that to thicken a little. There we go. Okay, we're gonna push this beef back in and add the first batch back in. Cook for another 30 seconds or so, and that is it. Wow. Okay, I'm just putting this back into the dish. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. So at our favorite Cambodian restaurant in town, Nam Pen, I would order this beef look lak, and we always have to order their chicken wings, which I did a video on several weeks ago called Crispy Air Fryer Chicken Wings, Nam Pen style, something like that. And at home, you can add as much beef as you want. And it's also served with some shredded lettuce some cucumber and tomato. 
And then again, at home, you can have as little or as much as you want and served with this vinaigrette. You can adjust it to however sweet or lime or fish sauce or garlicky you want or even spiciness. Just add a little bit more, add less. It's totally up to your taste. And that is it. Beef look lack. Are you all ready for? Yep. The taste. Oh yeah. One of the restaurants that I miss going to is Nam Pen. But if we can make those flavors at home, I'm all in. Look at all these colors and all the textures going on here. Fresh veg, tender beef, and the contrast with the salt, acid, fat, heat all going on in one dish. Somebody's hungry. Yeah, excuse the, the animals. Oh, I forgot the sauce. So the vinaigrette, I will pour it, douse the veg, and I like to put it on the beef and rice as well. So beef, rice, gravy, some veg. Okay, there's no way I can get that cucumber on here, but this is good enough. Oh yeah. Whoa, mm, that is amazing. Wow, that pop of flavor. The beef is indeed tender, deep flavors, lots of umami going on. And then, then the freshness of the veg, the textures, party in your mouth. And then you add on top the sauce, which kind of brings everything together. Non pen, number one, two, not in a particular order. Beef look lack and the wings, gotta have it all the time. And I usually get it with the egg as an option on top of the look like. It's a fried egg. And then when you break into the egg, the yolk just sort of oozes over. I was trying to pitch that for this idea, for this recipe, but Flo said, but that's another pan. That's more complexity. But I'm saying, why not go all the way? So do add that fried egg on top and it'll be amazingness. You mean it's not amazing as it is? I mean, more amazingness. Fellow Vancouverites, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Beef look like and chicken wings at Nam Pen. Oh my goodness. And now you can make it all at home and not go there. I love to support our local restaurants, but right now with all of the restrictions, you can have this easily at home. Make some wings on the side, check out the recipe. I will see you over there.